Common Core State Standards Support Video for Grade 3 in Math. This is Standard 3MD7. This third grade standard says to relate the area to the operations of multiplication and addition. Recognize area as additive. Find areas of rectilinear figures by decomposing them into non-overlapping rectangles and adding the areas of the non-overlapping parts, applying this technique to solve real-world problems. Now that's a lot to this standard, but so let's start off just uh, looking at this from an additive perspective. You'd want your students to have something, something solid uh, to work with, so maybe some little algebra tiles or whatever you have on hand. The students are switching over from non-standard units to standard units, so it's important to associate these tiles with that. So you might want to relate this to a square unit, which could be something like square inches, square centimeters. But again, the idea would be that, to keep it very simple, is that it's a one by one unit of some type, but it's a square unit that links over back to the area of area. Next, what we'd want to do is take all of those tiles that were all over the place and configure them in such a way where you make a rectangle to start getting to this idea of rectilinear figures. So in this case, we have made it to where it's a one by five rectangle. So again, they can uh, just count these up for now since we're still pretty much in an additive mode. Then what we can do is take, uh, let's say for example, that array that we have, that one by five, and let's have three of them. So now what the students can do is, starting from an additive perspective, go ahead and take these and just count them up to where, again, you'd have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Now at this stage in, thir in third grade, students are switching over to multiplication. So get them used to the idea that we can look at this as a 3 by 5 rectangle that has 15 square units for the area, where again, we're looking at, in this case, the horizontal rows would have three sets of five, or we can also look at this from another perspective, where it's five groups of three, where the kids would be looking at this in terms of five rows of three. Now, we need to go over to the idea of rectilinear figures, which are figures that are made up of straight lines, but not necessarily just nice simple rectangles, something like this figure here, where you have actually a combination of rectangles. So what we need to do is to give them experience with this type of figure where, again, it's more than just one simple rectangle. So using this one as an example, some students might decide to do this, where they slit, split it up into these three rectangles. And again, depending on where they are, you might have them You draw all of the smaller rectangles that are possible. So in this case, there's six total. And then over here, now here's where the students have got to do a little bit of figuring. Uh, they can tell that, well, this also has to be a two over here. So now, this is a two by two. And again, they can either just go by computation or actually have them draw it in. So now we have four square units there. And then they can do the same thing with the, the bigger rectangle. But again, the key here is that they're going to have to figure out, well, what is this length here? So if they look over here, they could tell that there was a two there, which means that this is going to have to be a four. So now basically we have a four by eight rectangle, and they can either do it with simple multiplication that there's 32 more. Or again, you can just have them draw it all out and have the 32 little squares. So now we have a total of four and six and 32, which would give us 42. Using the same figure, you know that kids will think differently, so some kids might approach it by doing something like this instead. And so we'd basically go through the same process where kids have to figure out what the different sides are. Well, this rectangle here, you've got uh, your sides already. It's three 
by 6. And again, depending on where they are, they can do it through multiplication or, or doing the counting. So we have a total of 18 there, 3 by 6. Uh, here, we know the sides, 2 by 6. So then here, we have 12 more to tack on. And then this is where they have to do a little bit of work here because they don't know what this is. If we look across, the whole distance is 8. And we have a 3 here and a 2 there. That's a total of 5. Let's see, 5 from 8. So this has to be a 3. And then, oh, we have to do some work here too. We had 6 total on the right or the left-hand side. So how far is it to here? Well, let's see, it was a, a distance of two there, total of six. Six minus two is four. So then this is a four. So we have a four by three rectangle, which will give us another 12. And so here we get the same total of 42 square units. You might have a few kids that will surprise you. They might look at this more from a subtraction perspective rather than an additive. What they might do is assume that you have the big rectangle that's 6 by 8, which would be a total of 48. And then they'll take this remaining rectangle and actually subtract whatever area that has. So again, it's a matter of figuring out, well, let's see, what's the dimensions? We already have the two. Uh, we need to figure out what this is. And just like before, we have three and two, that's five. We need to make up uh, the difference with eight, so this has to be a three. So that's a three by two rectangle, which is a total of six for the area. And guess what? These kids have come up with the same solution, but using a pretty different approach. The standard says that we need to apply this to real world problems. The ones that we did before, those could have represented, say, a kitchen floor where uh, you have all your little tiles would be the tiles that you put in a kitchen. And that's a good idea to do this in that manner, to have something in real life that kids can relate to. They can relate those square tiles to square units, be it square feet or whatever. So in this kind of situation, you might have some, something similar, a real life situation to where this would be a kitchen. And let's say you're going to have an island in the middle and you give the kids the task of figuring out how many tiles that you're actually going to need to find the area that you, where you want to put your tiles. There's different ways to approach this, just like we did before with the other example. And just very quickly, the most sensible thing for kids to do, they would probably figure out the total area, which is for the 8 by 6 rectangle, which would give you 48. And then for the shaded area in the middle, well, that's 4 by 2, which gives us 8. And then if we take the difference between the two, that's 40 square units.